Hey, what's going on guys? Dan and Sally, Learning Cameras, and we're here in the amazing Sedona, Arizona, checking out the Sony a7R III. And it's really an unbelievable camera. Sony has done a great job with this thing. So many little things have really added up into a complete system, and there are just some killer features for this one. Oh yeah, the autofocus system is an amazingly intelligent system. It's always looking for faces and eyes, and I love that I am not the typical wedding photographer that does a stagnant poses. I love my couples to move, to interact with each other. And with the Sony a7R III, we shot with models yesterday as they were moving as they were recomposing it, it was unbelievable it followed every single movement that they had yeah so you're talking 68 percent coverage 10 frames per second it just it really rocks all of the features that you would expect from a killer camera and it's got the same sensor from the a7r2 that's been loved for years and so yeah we're going to check out take a look at all these pictures we got links in the description below for this as well as to download these images so you can check it out yourself and see the quality but a whole lot more to come also we've got the full review that will be uh, a little bit more in depth coming out in a couple weeks so make sure you're subscribed for that please like as well and stay tuned for some awesome images and some impressions of what we thought about this new camera Let's talk hardware, because since the A7 series was first introduced, this was actually my least favorite part about these cameras. Sure, we got this small body size, but with that, it meant uh, missing features like dual card slots, horrible battery life, and the controls were just really fiddly, just not a great experience. And while these cameras look very similar to the older generations, there are some massive hardware improvements that I think you're really gonna like. The back scroll wheel used to be one of my least favorite ones on any cameras, now much better with plenty of feedback. The joystick is great for focus point changes, a much larger battery finally up to the competition, and I can't overstate how much better this battery is. The camera offers dust and moisture resistance, and we do have a touch screen for touch autofocus, although you still cannot use that touch screen to access any of the menu settings. Of course, these are things that Canon and Nikon photographers have had for years, but the A7R 3 kind of one-ups them a little bit by giving you USB-C port for charging, 10 frames per second shooting, more on that in a little bit, and an EVF, which is finally ready to take on optical viewfinder. It's great quality and gives you a realistic preview of your image before you actually take the picture. But things are not perfect. The body is significantly smaller and lighter in the competition, but you know, you might have to add a battery grip for some better handling with large lenses, and at times your hands just feel a little bit cramped. The menu system also, while being much better than before, is just a little bit of a struggle to figure out where controls are and to get the layout right for you. features that have definitely stood out to me. Obviously the autofocus system is impeccable. I worked with that all day yesterday and I tried out every little thing to see if maybe it would mess up and it, it really did not. Um, that was absolutely mind blowing as well as dual card slots. You also have a silent shutter which will work at up to 10 frames per second but you know you can see rolling shutter this is not like the a9 which virtually eliminated it so be careful shooting moving objects you just might want to stick to this for portraits or uh, non-moving objects things like landscapes as well one big missing feature though is there's no built-in intervalometer so time lapses are going to require a separate controller and you can check out this video for more information on that but this is a huge miss for this camera and something that we had in the a7r2 and virtually every other camera has we also have new features that you can only get in a mirrorless camera we have the pixel shift giving us higher resolution and more detailed images we have five and a half stops now of image stabilization in body image stabilization combining with the optical image stabilization of our lenses. And then we also have an amazing autofocus system with features like IAF that's able to track your eye as it moves across the frame and give you much more frame coverage than we were able to get with a typical traditional DSLR autofocus system. I will say for photo mode, it does seem very good. It was pulling out vibration, no problem. Even with long lenses, I wasn't having an issue. I still do not find this very effective for video. It, it seems to just try to hold a single point. It's not really smoothing the motion. It's trying to lock things in. Again, video has always been great on Sony mirrorless cameras, but the A7R 3 takes things up a notch. The 4K is still at 30 frames per second, but you used to have to stop into Super 35 mode on the A7R 2 to get great quality. But on the A7R 3, even in full frame mode, the quality looks great. 
And then if you pop it down into Super 35, you get just a little bit better quality on that one. You are oversampling from a 5K area, so you do get great noise reduction on that, reduced moiré, it just overall very detailed images. You also have 1080p at up to 120 frames per second, which again is class leading for this. And I love that Sony includes video functions like focus peaking and log recording. And now you even have HLG for dynamic range. I mean, the a7R 3 gives us the best of any competing camera in this space. But on the bad side, the screen just isn't as bright as I would like it to be. The touch autofocus has a bit of lag. And again, you can only use it for touch autofocus and you're limited to 8-bit video, internal or external. So if you need something better, you might have to look for other options, but overall, you just will not find a better photography camera with more amazing video. Now, of course, what matters the most with any professional camera is gonna be the field usability, and I found that a7R 3 was actually really good in that area compared with the older cameras that didn't really compete as well with my Canon Nikon cameras. Controls are right where they should be. They felt good, positive feedback. Overall, it's a very good experience. The autofocus is great. And then you have features like the EVF. I mean, having the electronic viewfinder with your exposure, seeing it right out of camera was an amazing experience. And this EVF is actually one of the best that I've used. The only thing that I will say is the camera's kind of tuned out of the box box for preserving battery life so you're going to want to change that in the settings and by default your EVF is going to be a little bit brighter than your screen outdoors it's also not the higher refresh rate and so but enabling those features I still find I had excellent battery life at the end of the day and then the EVF was one of the best features on the camera and it really has improved compared to their older cameras. At this point, I think we get it that the image quality on this is amazing. I mean, it's based on the same sensor as the a7R2, but we do have some improvements in electronics and also the processing of it. That's gonna make it a little bit better. At 6400 ISO, I'm pretty impressed with what this camera is able to deliver. I mean, this isn't anything revolutionary. We've seen this on the a7R2, Nikon D850. Overall, this is gonna be one of the best cameras, if not the best camera when it comes to image quality. Now we do have 10 frames per second shooting on this camera, but you might not want to do that. Dropping it into eight frames per second is going to get you from 12-bit RAW up to 14-bit RAW, and it's also going to give you full live view preview and everything like that while you're shooting. So eight frames per second is really the max frame rate in order to get all the features out of the a7R 3 But let's talk buffer. Sony did something a little controversial even on the A9, which is that we have one UHS-2 slot and one UHS-1, and what that means is your buffer clears a little bit slower if you were to shoot RAW to both cards because you have to have one onto the UHS-1 slot. Now let's talk about that buffer because uh, one thing that is noticeable is that the buffer clears a little bit slower on some cameras and you will be waiting a couple seconds before you can do some functions of the camera. For example, while the buffer is waiting to clear, you cannot go straight from photo into video mode. So you gotta wait for that to clear and then you can jump into video mode. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that while you can review images, some of the menu items and like punching in and things like that are locked out until that buffer clears. Now, in my experience while I was there, I never maxed out the buffer. You're gonna have to really try to do that at eight frames per second shooting, but you can. And what that means is you need to wait until that buffer clears out before you can access some of those functions. Overall, when combining the amazing quality and dynamic range we've come to expect from Sony cameras, I'm really impressed with this camera. Mirrorless is now giving us everything that we would come to expect from a DSLR and even more. And then combined with the awesome sensor and some of the technology that's available on this thing, it's really an amazing camera. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned. A whole lot more to come. Thanks.